Okay, so today I'm going to show you how the circle on the left hand side, what we call the unit circle, can generate the sine function or generate the cosine function. Stay tuned. Okay, so our topic today is to take the unit circle. We're going to start with a quarter circle here on the left hand side and show how it can actually generate the sine curve or cosine curve that you're probably already used to. Now, first of all, why do we call this the unit circle? Remember, the word unit, uh, in German you say the Einheitskreis, means this is a circle of radius 1. Okay, so notice it's going to cross the y-axis here at 1 and the x-axis here at 1 as well. And what we're going to do is consider triangles inside the circle. So what we're going to start with is this triangle here with an angle of 10 degrees. So I'm going to draw this out down here just so we can see exactly what is going on. So I have a right angle triangle, this angle is 10 degrees, and notice I've marked this side here in red. So let's give this a label. Let's give this the label of X. And what we're going to do here is actually use our knowledge of trigonometry, so Sokotoa, so knowing the opposite adjacent hypotenuse and working with that. So if we take this triangle here, well, the longest side is always the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle. Opposite the 10 degrees is our opposite, hence the word opposite. And then the other side next to the angle is the adjacent. Now, many people teach this in different ways. Let me use a different color. Um, we're going to using sine, because we're going to focus on the sine function today. And I like to use these so-called formula triangles. Okay, you might find these very, very useful, uh, or you may not. Okay, but if you do it a different way, that's fine. What we can say here is that the sine of the angle, so sine of 10, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the opposite is the O here. So that's going to be our X. And then it's over the hypotenuse, H. Now, in this particular triangle, notice that this length here, this length going all the way across, is also one as well, because it's a radius of the circle. So we can rewrite this as x over 1. And so anything over 1 is just equal to x. So what I'm saying here is that the sine of 10 degrees, so we're working in degrees, is equal to x, i.e., the sine of 10 degrees equal to that red length there. So this is a way of generating an actual specific length for these that you usually use a calculator for. So if we take the 10 degrees here, this is our scale on the x-axis, it'll go up as far as that red line. So let me put that over there. We can do a similar analysis on the next triangle. So notice how I drew a bigger triangle and did exactly the same process. I'm going to draw it slightly differently. So this time we're going to kind of pretend this is 20 degrees. We still go through the same procedure. So we'd say that this is x. Uh, this is going to be 1 because the hypotenuse of the triangle is always going to be 1 regardless of where we draw it. And then if we work this out, well, the sine of 20 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's x over 1, which is equal to x. So this length here represents sine 20. So we're going to transfer that red length over to here. And as you can probably see at this point, you can actually do this all the way around. So sine 30, it's going to go here, sine 40, sine 50, sine 60, sine 70, sine 80. And notice that sine 90, well, which makes lots of sense here, is going to be 1, because it's the complete vertical direction there. So we're going to pop that in over there. Now the next question is, well, what happens after this if we do the same analysis? Well, what we can do is actually do a similar process by going the other way around. So we do triangles here until we get down to zero. And notice, now we're going into the third quadrant, we're actually going to get some negative values as well. Okay, But we do the same process with our triangle to generate all these lengths. I love this animation so much, I'm going to do it again for you. So notice the triangle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, these red lengths, and now these red lengths are going more and more and more 
in the negative direction until we get to minus 1, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller until we get to 0. And this generates the sine curve that we know and love. Okay, And notice the same features of the sine curve as we've talked about already. So sine 90 is equal to 1, sine 270 is equal to minus 1, uh, 180 is at 0 and 360 is at 0. So I thought I'd do this short video to show you that you can actually use the unit circle to generate your sine function. And in the same way, which I won't do in today's video, you could actually look at this length, the adjacent length, and do a similar process for the cosine curve as well. So, hope you found that useful. Um, if you're liking these kind of more advanced videos, then please do let me know. And I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye-bye for now.